Hello and welcome to Shonen Jump Works, an examination of the Western adaptation of Weekly Shonen Jump. As you may have noticed, this is episode 0, with episode 1 being Dragon Ball Z. But before we start with the bedrock of American taste in anime, let's back up and talk about how we got here. In Japan, manga is mostly read in weekly magazines, with only about two-thirds of them ever reaching bound volumes. In contrast, bound volumes are reserved mostly for people that really enjoy a specific series. However, in the West, the primary way to consume manga is by these same bound volumes, and history is littered with the corpses of attempts to bring the monthly anthology-style magazine to the West. While Sailor Moon, Akira, Dragon Ball, and Pokemon, and the blockbuster and sci-fi OVA Pantheon pushed the pendulum towards consuming more anime-based content, the jury was still out on how to bring manga stateside. For close to a decade, the method of choice was floppies, by reversing the manga for regular English reading order and being released in single or two chapter chunks like classic comic books with only the occasional shot at an anthology. These range widely in terms of the target audience, from Tokyo Pop's mix zine that had Parasite, Ray Earth, and Sailor Moon, to the long-running An America magazine, the Sinin Focus Pulp magazine, and even the would-be early jumps adult theme foil Raijin comics. Again, these all honestly deserve videos of their own, but the star of today's show is Viz Media's own Shonen Jump. These magazines were, for lack of better words, raging a war, and Viz took notice of something that no one else grasped at the time, or at the very least no one else was fortunate enough to happen onto while other magazines that have several well-beloved series, uh, and sometimes even well-known hits in the anime community, Viz had something the competition lacked. The eyes of children. Uh, Viz was spitballing an adaptation of Coral Coral Magazine, licensing video game adaptations aimed at a younger audience and letting Pokemon be the star of the show. Uh, given that Pokemon would be one of the relatively few manga series that would sell very well and reach outside of existing anime fans. However, this hypothetical argument that would also be interested in, say, Mickey Mouse cartoons would actually be somewhat fleeting. It seemed that the real money in terms of disposable income in the existing market uh, was not with dedicated anime fans, but with the up-and-coming new age of anime aimed at a younger demographic, with the advent of Toonami and Saturday Morning Cartoons, and, and with the wisdom that adult anime fans probably knew at the time that you can drop cartoons as a kid, but as a teen, the only way you're getting out is in a body bag. This would be a reoccurring theme in early jump works. As it happens, several of the hottest anime titles for preteens and young adults also happen to be Shonen Jump titles, with the only entry fee being not having disposable income for rentals and videos, access to specialized video stores, or access to the internet for bootleg copies, but merely having a television and tuning in to a channel that a child would already be dispositioned to watch. And in most places in America, not having cable was not an escape from the ever-present hand of Shonen Jump content. The time was right and the market was primed for anime. While there were several concerns as every attempt to do a product like this would be a noble effort that would eventually hit the ground, the winds were in Viz's favor. Manga had just been dragged kicking and screaming out of the back of comic book stores and heading well into a six year long boom. The only remaining issue was twofold. People know that manga sounds like a hit. Kids love Yusuke, but will they love Yusuke on paper? In theory, this sounds like an obvious slam dunk, but manga's closest neighbor is American comic books, and that kind of gamble is not a guarantee, given the state of American comic books pretty much always struggling, even after the advent of the MCU. And the second issue would be how would this be received? While cartoons on television may have a somewhat inherent stamp of approval, airing on children's television networks and in children's television blocks, books, regardless of how they are labeled, don't have that same implied stamp of approval. And manga is prone to being the rawest, unfiltered version of a particular work that may or may not have been edited down in the anime adaptation. So what may have been normal battle damage in an anime may be perceived as a very visceral show of blood and gut that would be considered inappropriate for children. And while that may sound like a completely ridiculous concern, 
mostly because it is, that's also a valid one for a media company to have because this is not an age of Crunchyroll and Target having Hero Academia merch, but a world that thought Pokemon was satanic, so for a media company, these would be valid concerns to have. However, the legacy of Viz's early translation seemed to be mostly the opposite of 4Kids. And given that we live in the current year, and not 2003, we already know how this story more or less ends. The magazine would go out of print, start anew as Weekly Shonen Jump, then in print again, and begin as the digital-only Shonen Jump Alpha that itself would later be cancelled in exchange for something more resembling a Netflix of anime-style Shonen Jump app. But again, those are all stories for some other time. For the time being, we are going to be focusing on Shonen Jump magazine, uh, mostly ignoring the other features in it, such as previews of series that would be starting their Tonkoban run soon that needed a marketing push, such as Bo 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 Bo, Gintama, and Claymore, or having countless interviews with other Jump-related mangaka, fan art, and the ever-present and wanted by relatively few monthly Yu-Gi-Oh card. No, instead we are mostly going to focus on the series contained within Shonen Jump. For the next several weeks, we will be talking about Jump's opening lineup for its American adaptation. Dragon Ball Z, Sandland, One Piece, Yu Yu Hakusho, and Yu-Gi-Oh! So, on the first proper episode of Shonen Jump Works, things are going to get Mondo Cool. That's right, boys. Mondo Cool. <laughs> 